All right, for today's lesson, I prepared this nice little landscape here, and it was created using some notes in World Blender Pro. For example, the the erosion node, I increased the rock break a little bit to create this kind of rock formation, and I have this warp landscape node to warp the landscape a bit, but more on that later. These are more like advanced features of World Blender, so I'm going to touch on these later. Today's subject is about materials. And since we are just getting started, I'm going to just use the basic features of World Blender. And here I already assigned a uh, an empty material for the landscape. So let's go to the shader editor and hit home to focus on the notes. Now let's go to the material notes and here we have a bunch of helpers, I mean utilities. First and probably the most important node is this uh, landscape data node. Let's visualize the data channel. This is the debris channel. It's actually the dirt channel, but uh, I name it debris to keep it uh, consistent with Houdini because in Houdini, this particular data channel is called debris. So here I just call it debris so that it's uh, like Houdini. Anyway, you can normalize the data channel to have a better view of what's going on. All right, the next channel is the wear channel. Now the wear channel indicate the parts uh, where the rock was eroded. A darker color means that uh, less erosion and brighter colors mean more erosion. All right, next is the convexity data channel. This is the normalized convexity and this is the raw convexity. These black regions are like in the negative value so it appears as black but uh, if we normalize it, we can see that it's there is actually some information in there. So anyway, this convexity channel was not created during the erosion. But by this particular node, the landscape to object node, it has this generate convexity thing. And you can actually play around with this setting to change the convexity map. But I'm not going to do that because it will force the entire node graph to rerun, which is pretty slow. So let's get back to the shader editor. Next is the flow channel. Now the flow channel indicates the amount of water that went through a certain part of the landscape. For example, this is the, the top of the mountain. There's not a lot of water going through. The water around the, the landscape kind of go into this crease. So there should be more water within this crease than on the top of the mountain. This flow map is just the flow of the final cycle of the simulation. All right. If you want to see the flow of the entire simulation, you have to use this nflow channel. All right. This is the sum of all the flow of all the cycles. And next we have the water channel. And finally we have the snow channel. For now we don't have any snow in this mountain, so there is nothing here. And also, the snow is an advanced feature of World Blender Pro. So, using World Blender Basic, you won't have any snow in your scene. All right. The first channel that we will be using is the debris channel. We will be using this channel to separate the dirt and the rock. So, we need two separate material for one for the dirt and one for the rock. And I'm going to mix these using a mix shader node. I'm going to use the debris channel to mix these two shader. Now for the dirt, let's just use a white so that it looks like snow. And for the rock, let's just use something dark like that. Now normally, you can use this unnormalized debris channel to mix the rock and the dirt. But I find it a little too sharp in this case. So I'm going to use the normalized channel, but with a little bit of a twist using a color ramp node. And I'm going to bring the white key to the left until I find a nice blend between the rock and the dirt. For the rock, I'm going to increase the roughness and decrease the IOR level, like so. And maybe make it a little bit brighter color. All right. And just leave the dirt as white for now. We're going to focus on making the shader for the rock first and then we will make the shader for the dirt. Let me move this landscape data node back a little bit and I'm going to create a RGB curve node and also 
an RGB input node and I will copy this color to the RGB input and I'm going to put this here like that and I'm going to increase the brightness of this color like that and this factor will be controlled by this wear map okay now I have this color for the rock and let's see the next step I will copy this RGB curve node and place it here and this time I'm going to control it using the convexity map like so but the convexity is a little too bright I want this whole region to be black right so I'm going to create a color ramp node like that and I will move the black key to the right like that okay now the convexity map only has this uh, nice little edges here look at that I have a very nice map for the edges of the rock and let's see all right we have this kind of color and after this node we have this kind of color it's pretty nice right and let's see the rocks all right this is after mixing with the other data channel and this is before right we have a lot more details right and next I want some color variation along the height of the mountain so to do that I'm going to pull in this height info node now the height info has this height output which is the real height information including the positive and negative values and the n height is the normalized height channel of the landscape where the lowest point will be black and the highest point will be white so I'm going to be using the n height for this operation create a noise texture and use a 1D noise like that now we have some very nice color variation along the height right and I can increase this to add some more details like that and finally I will simply mix this with the color of the the rock using a soft light mix mode soft light there we go and I'm gonna mix like that and there we go we have a very nice looking rocky kind of mountain and you can increase or decrease this lighter to increase or decrease the color variation I think this is good and let's see the rock there we go all right there is actually a lot more you can do with the rock for example the normal currently there is no additional normal but uh, you can actually use a Voronoi texture to add some variation to the surface as well but I'm going to leave the normal for another day now let's focus on the dirt channel I mean the dirt part of the mountain and again let's pull in the landscape data node and again we will be using the debris channel and the normalized debris okay so depend on the amount of dirt that we have we should have different type of plants that grow on it so in many cases you can actually use the debris channel to control the color of the dirt for example here we don't have a lot of dirt right so there can't be any big trees growing around here so it should have a lot of dirt kind of colors but here we have a lot of dirt right so there should be a lot of trees and grass and stuff so you can get away with some greener color so I'm going to be using this debris channel to control the color of the dirt so create a color ramp node like that this should be some sand kind of color and this should be some greenish color to indicate indicate the grass all right and be sure to use uh, ease instead of linear using linear is a little more predictable but uh, it's not realistic how uh, grass kind of grow all right like that and I can add even more keys to this and further configure the uh, colors all right and I will put this into the base color of the dirt channel there we go it looks pretty nice huh now for world blender pro you have these color mixer nodes which is pretty similar to this color ramp node but uh, you can actually put in textures instead of solid color like this but more on these later 
For today, I'm going to be using this simple color ramp to control the colors. Okay, let's switch back to Blender, World Blender Basics. Next, let's pull in the Select Slope Threshold node. Now this uh, this node kind of select the, the slope based on the angle and produce a mask like this. I'm going to invert the mask so that I select the, the, uh, the flat region instead of the slope. So I'm going to control this angle to control the selection and also increase the spread a bit to make the transition a little smoother. Next, I will simply multiply these together. So create a map node and multiply and we have this color channel. You can actually play around with this uh, color ramp node to control the color. You can actually add even more keys to this. All right, let's say I'm happy with this kind of color for the dirt. Next, I'm going to use this flow to somehow change the color of the dirt as well, because uh, the flow of water does actually affect the, how the plants kind of grow, right? So this flow channel should affect uh, the color a little bit, right? So I'm going to move these forward a bit and visualize the color of the dirt. Let's copy this here and let's create a mixed color node and just use a simple soft light mixing technique and mix it with a flow like that. Okay, I like this mix like that. Next is a little trick, all right? Normally, this wear map belongs to the rock only, but we can actually use this to introduce some color variations for the color of the dirt. So I'm going to soft light this wear map with the color of the dirt as well, and I get this very nice color variation. And let's see the final result. Looks pretty nice, huh? And maybe I can make the dirt grow a little more on top of the mountain. All right, that is the basic of materials for the landscape. There's actually more than this, but that's another topic for another day. And before I end today's video, I want to improve this shader a little bit more by introducing some effect of the water because we do have this uh, water channel let me show you the water all right we do have this water channel which is currently not used so i want to use this water channel to somehow control the color of the landscape as well because around this region the the water kind of stagnant right so there shouldn't be much plant going around here. So I'm going to duplicate this principled shader and uh, mix it with the uh, other mixed shader. And I'm going to use the water to mix these two shaders like that. But currently the water's effect is a little too much. So I'm going to use a color ramp node like this to get rid of some of the water like that and bring the white key to the left to flatten the water like that. All right, and for this color, I want to use some kind of dirt looking color like that because around this region, there shouldn't be too much grass because basically there is too much water here for the grass to grow. And I think the, the effect of the water is a little too much. So I'm going to, to decrease the brightness of the white key to something like that. All right, look at that. We have even more details in the landscape now. So this is the rock, this is the dirt, this is the combined rock and dirt, and this is the combined rock, dirt, and the water. So you have quite a bit of details here using just a few notes. I mean, this is not a few notes, but uh, it's still not too complicated. And would you look at that? It looks super nice, right? And you can actually add even more details to this using textures instead of solid colors. Right now it's just solid colors, so imagine what you can do with textures. Okay, the basic material for the landscape is finished. There's more to this, but that's another topic for another day when I dive deeper into the more advanced feature of World Blender. Today is all about the basics, so I'm going to end today's video here. I hope you managed to replicate this in your project and in the next video I'm going to touch on a slightly more advanced topic of World Blender, for example, the helpers. Stay tuned, I'll see you next time.